So how could this affect Robert Mueller's ongoing investigation? Is Donald Trump building an obstruction of justice case against himself? Joining me now from Washington is former U.S. federal prosecutor John Flannery. Mr. Flannery, uh, if these reports are accurate and the president did indeed try to have the special counsel fired in June, how does that change the obstruction of justice part of Mueller's investigation? Well, I think it strengthens it. I mean, we have so many data points of him trying to get rid of various people at various times. You know, the assistant attorney general, Yates, the New York prosecutor, Comey, and then on top of it, uh, before he even has a chance <laughs> to know what Mueller can do with him, he's telling his counsel who helped him get rid of Comey that he's going to try to get rid of uh, Mueller. Uh, I think it just makes the case stronger. Combined with uh, a false statement he wrote for his son to pretend that a critical meeting with the Russians in June of 2016 was about adopting Russian children when he knew very well it was a lot more than that and it had to do with getting dirt on Hillary from questionable intercepts of DNC emails and data. It's fascinating to watch these stories start to add up. For the longest time, we, did, we really didn't know what Mr. Mueller was up to. He, had, he was running a very tight ship. And now we're starting to get a sense of the work he's at, right? So apparently he's already interviewed Jeff Sessions, the uh, Attorney General. He's interviewed Mr. Comey, the former FBI director, uh, whose firing kind of kicked this all off. And now he's looking to interview the President himself in the coming weeks. What does this tell you about where Mueller is at in his investigation? Well, some might think he was in his endgame because he's following a classical route for investigators. There are really two ways to do this. You call a person you think might become a target, meaning you have enough to indict him at the beginning of an investigation, and ask him every conceivable question. He's following the more traditional route, and it's going to be a more visible and questionable result, whatever he comes up with, in which he's calling the principal targets or people we think are going to be targets at the end of the investigation. So he's gone up the ladder, and at the pyramid is Mr. Trump. And so I can't say that he's going to close down his operation and start issuing indictments and reports, but I think that this is a, a normal path to get every bit of information you can every possible piece of data, witness testimony, documents, so that when you do talk to him, you can ask him every conceivable question and head off his lying nature at the pass. Okay. Um, now, the president himself has been a bit of a moving target this week. On Wednesday, he said he wants to talk to Mr. Mueller. He said he's even happy to do it under oath. Now his lawyers are saying they're not so sure about that. Well, if, if you're yeah. Mueller, what do you, what's going yeah. through your head as you hear him say all this? Uh, you're thinking, well, do whatever you will, but in the end game, if you guys refuse the interview, I'm going to subpoena you to the grand jury. And uh, this is exactly what happened with uh, Mr. Clinton. When President Clinton was in office, they subpoenaed him, and then they basically agreed that he would testify before the grand jury from the Oval Office. It would be transmitted there, both video and audio, and it would be made public after he testified. And so... Uh, he could always do this, meaning Mueller could always do this, and that's what's hanging over the White House. So the best that the White House can do and Trump can do is Trump can say, oh, I'll do whatever my lawyers say. I want to be there. I want to cooperate, and I'll do it, and then hope he can hide behind his lawyers saying, oh, they're just telling me to do this. But it, I think in the end he'll end up doing the interview, and if he doesn't, there'll be a crisis. We'll be in court if they try to avoid the subpoena. He has a couple of ways to try to limit the interview, but the only one that's really effective is if he should invoke his Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. <laughs> Wouldn't that be problematic, given some of the public statements he's made about the Fifth Amendment in the past? Well, you could ask yourself, is an orange jumpsuit more suitable to his decor? Because I think that this guy is a terrible witness, and he lies terribly, and there's so many things to contradict all his various stories, and he contradicts himself. Inconsistent sworn testimony is itself perjury, and you don't have to decide which statement was true. So uh, I think uh, his lawyers are trying to give him the kind of classical information that politicians, even ones better at telling lies than this chief executive, um, uh, they because they know where this could go. And John Dowd and I years ago were prosecutors in an official corruption case, uh, prosecuting a congressman and. I, I, the, the team knows what they should do. They have a client that doesn't listen. Okay, if Mueller does get the president into an interview situation, what's he going to try to get? What's he going to be after in that? Well, you know, you can start several ways, but after you got his name down and what his current address is at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, yeah, well, and Mar-a-Lago, etc., as you would say, so explain to me why you misled America when you 
wrote that statement that the only thing the meeting on June 9th was about was about uh, adoption of Russian children, when you knew very well from the conferences that you had immediately before you issued that statement that uh, it was much more than that. Uh, and uh, why did you do that? Why were you trying to mislead us? What were you trying to hide? Why were you conscious of guilt? What guilt is it that you were trying to conceal? Those kinds of variations. And he has several instances in which you can ask those kinds of questions. Okay. How, how long a session would this be, assuming it ever happens? Uh, I mean, conceivably, the president could just stonewall him if it's a short session. Uh, well, you know, I've, all of us who do trial work and those of us who've been prosecutors know how to handle the kinds of people that have an I don't recall silhouetted by all these other things that they know. But the best way to handle an obnoxious witness is their own statements that they made and documents that contradict them. And we have several documents that Mr. Trump was involved in, one of which he did with his counsel, McCann, uh, when they first fired uh, Comey. And a week after that statement, which said it had to do with Hillary, he admitted in an NBC report that really was about the Russian investigation that he didn't think should go forward. That's a direct admission that gives him the intent to obstruct. And when you obstruct, why are you doing it? It's because you're trying to conceal something else. And politicians particularly often make a crime worse in the cover-up stage than what the original evidence was of the crime that they were implicated in. Okay. So if I'm Donald Trump and I see this mess coming at me, I might start to look for an exit. Are you 100% sure he's not going to fire Mr. Mueller even now? Well, if he fires Mr. Mueller, he'll go out the door, too, because no one who replaces him will back off this investigation. And you have all those agents, and you have Republicans on the Hill, uh, many of whom are up for election in the midterms. It would be a political bloodbath if there isn't a reaction against it. Um, I think he is more likely to resign. I basically think that bullies are cowards, and I think when finally he has to read the cards, he'll do what he does in civil litigation, this time with the focus on himself, and he'll resign. And I'm hoping he's going to do it before my birthday, which is in May. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we all hope for uh, our own kinds of birthday presents. Best of luck to you on that. Thanks for this uh, former U.S. federal prosecutor, John Flannery. Thank you. Nice to be with you, Paul.